All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Spencer Hillegos, who is just up the coast in the Bay Area up in San Francisco. How are you doing, Spencer? Doing great, John. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. And Spencer is a co-founder and principal of Madison Investing. And what we're going to talk today about is a really interesting uh, subject, I think, personally. Uh, and this is the intersection between personal and professional development. And what I like about this subject, uh, Spencer, is that, you know, there's always this kind of temptation for us to try and separate out things, work related things and personal things, and almost try and convince ourselves that there's no overlap between the two. So whether you're doing professional development or whether you're working on personal development, sometimes people try to keep these things completely separate. True story. I mean, I think um, not only is this a fun topic, it's a very personal one for me too, John. I mean, I think about, uh, you know, growing up, I was exposed to be entrepreneur and my dad was an entrepreneur for 30 years as a real estate uh, broker. So I was in a business, a small business, you know, so that was what I saw. I thought it was deeply uncool um, because I live in Silicon Valley. So tech is the cool thing to do. Join tech companies, spend 13 years in tech companies between sales and ops. And then here I find myself full time in, in real estate once again, you know, kind of like a boomerang. Mm -hmm. And that's relevant because ultimately I went in with the same kind of feeling and approach to my work as a new college grad, you know, as I think a lot of sales professionals and others do, which is like, you tie your self-worth, you tie your personal development, all of it to your title, <laughs> to your work, to, you know, to, to your job. Um, and, and I look back then also how that impacted things such as the relationships I could have invested more in with my colleagues, my bosses, my, you know, my company uh, and beyond. So it's really a personal topic for me because now I, I would say that what started for so many people and many of those I've coached and mentored over the years in sales as well, like you start here using hand gestures. So those on audio mm -hmm. only won't, won't get the example. On one end of the spectrum, you have your professional face, the other end of the spectrum, you have your personal face. And I think for a lot of us, that starts out with a very large chasm between the two. Um, and, and I, an early mentor told me point blank, he's like, be the same person to everyone that you interact with. And that just did not make sense to me at that time. But here we are now CEO of my own business. It took, you know, I'm a slow learner, apparently, John, but I would say that, uh, that that very much feels correct to me now. Whereas like whether it's interacting with, you know, at, at a kid's party for one of our boys, you know, at a kid's birthday party, or it's, you know, talking to one of our investors, who's like a very significant investor with us. I'm the same person across the board, but it took years to get there. And I think for a lot of folks, it's a confusing journey in general. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with you. And I think I think there's a couple of things that contribute uh, to that. I think, first of all, I think a lot of what you're talking about here is starts off with your self-awareness journey. And that's a tough journey to start on. And it's one that I really I always encourage people to do it. I mean, I wish I'd done it earlier, but it, it, I think lack of self-awareness is one of the things that holds people back from being successful. And part of that lack of self-awareness is the fact that I is that they are presenting different personas to different people and trying to be more chameleon like as opposed to being authentic. And if there's one thing that the pandemic and everything has taught us is that people really crave authenticity. Truly, you know, I, I think um. One of the reasons I appreciate you bringing topics like this on your show so much, John, is because it's under discussed, at least in a, um, even like a pragmatic sense. A lot of times, you know, we talk about, sure, professional development. I've devoured more books than I care to reference here. I would just say that um, most of those principles, when I was reading, you know, you know, 50, 60 books plus over the course of just a couple of years, thinking, oh, this is great for my work. You know, and it's, I've applied those principles in parenting. I mean, I've, I've applied those mm -hmm. principles in more challenging discussions with long-term friends when we're trying to resolve something between us. Um, and, and so I, I look at that landscape now, it, particularly during COVID, to your point, where how disorienting must it be for those who are trying to navigate the professional journey and personal journey, and they've been unable to do that in person with colleagues bouncing off ideas face-to-face -face over a period of time, because Although we, you and I are talking over, over a, a virtual meeting right now, and it's, and it's a wonderful conversation, there are still moments where I look back and I'm like, that was a formative moment for me personally, because I got very crystal clear feedback from a mentor or a colleague. 
And that was, it was direct. I mean, some of the best feedback I've ever received was not exactly a good feeling at the time, like being pulled off of the floor at the end of a long work day from the most meaningful mentor in my life ever, probably. And he kind of, kind of tore into me and it sounds, it sounds a little violent, but I'll just say it was the most helpful <laughs> feedback I'd probably ever received. And I needed it. Uh, I don't think I could have heard that message as easily over a, over a zoom call. I probably would have taken it very differently because I couldn't read the compassion through the lines. And right. I, I keep that lesson very close to my heart because I think that it, it, it applies to everything that I do about humility and about, to your point, self-awareness. Um, and, and the phrase that I would just want to uh, kind of put a period on a sentence with John is like holding up the mirror to uh, to ourselves and certainly to the folks that I've, I've worked with in a leadership or managerial capacity. If nothing else, if I can't provide any other value to someone, I at least want to help them do that in a way that is grounded deeply in compassion, you know, and, and, yeah. and uh, the compassion, transparency, and, and real examples, you know, all those basics yeah. on the coaching front, but just hold up the mirror and, and that, that can really provide immense value for someone. Yeah, uh, and and I would just like to underline your your point about compassion because I mean clearly we live in a world that's lacking in a lot of compassion and people have have got sidetracked into, and I blame you know I mean obviously social media and electronic communicate that it's very easy it's kind of allowed the, some people to bring out the worst in themselves but I think if you start from a place of of compassion, you certainly can't go wrong. But I'll also tell you. Uh, Honestly, Spencer is some of the some of the best lessons I've learned over the years and some of the best teachers of I've had didn't know they were teaching me and didn't know they were giving me lessons and <laughs> they weren't doing it deliberately. Um, but I learned a lot from the from the inter from the interactions or from the situation. And I think that's what you've also got to do is you've also got to look at sometimes when we have what we perceive as a negative experience. We have to look at what is the what, what what's the lesson in it. Once we calm ourselves down a wee bit, like what is the lesson in this? And yes, did I like what was said to me there? Did I like the way it was even said to me? Maybe I didn't. But when I push that aside, maybe there's a nugget in there that I can take away uh, take away from it. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I think um, it makes me also think about that you know that thread of compassion. And if I could go back. You know, we can't wait. None of us have time machines. Um, but if mm -hmm. I could go back to earlier stage of my corporate career and somehow impart the knowledge or wisdom on myself, you know, grab myself figuratively by the shoulders and just simply say uh, everything that you, every person that you are interacting with in your office, every member of your team, your, your, your peers, the people, if you perceive them as beneath diagonal above you, we're all on the same ultimate playing field. It just happens to be they have different titles, experiences and beyond these foot people will be your future network of friends, professionals, and beyond. And, and, and that carry those relationships with you for your life, because that is really arguably, I would say the most critical takeaway, which I could go back and I try not to live with regret, but I look back at some relationships and I'm like, man, I looked at that as a professional relationship. And that, I think that was wrong. Um, I, I think that was actually a personal relationship because ultimately they all are, they all are. Um, and yeah. it, even if the receiving end may not necessarily think of it that way, you don't need to creep them out. Um, it, it, but, but just thinking of it truly, like, you know, as you and I interact today, John, like, you know, every relationship starts in a particular place and you have no idea where it could end up positively. Um, so it's just, it's a very different ethos that I would want to encourage folks to just think about, particularly if they're earlier in the, in the, in the journey, sales career or leadership career, or otherwise, like everyone out there is a relationship. And, and if you look at it, as a, as a legitimate one, not just professional, it may last longer and take you places you never thought. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's where, I mean, as you said, I mean, you mentor people or whatever, like I have, I, I do sometimes myself as well. And I think that the, the great benefit of that is that we can look back and we can, or we can recognize sometimes behaviors in people uh, that we ourselves in, engaged in in the past and we can sort of go and we can sort of know that that's not going to get them where they want to go it's not going to make them happy and it gives us that insight to hopefully spare people the some of the some of the uh, learning the hard way that perhaps perhaps we did but it is it is great to look back sometimes and and to say like not with the regret not to in, not to dwell on things or indulge in them too much but to look at maybe there are there are, number one you can measure where you've come how far you've come and second off there's great lessons that you can impart to others yes i mean one thing i, I know we hadn't necessarily touched on john but i i feel like it's 
so critical. It's been a critical part of my life as an entrepreneur after the corporate environment. Um, I left my my cor corporate life to launch our own company just a few years ago, five months before the pandemic, ironically, went full time. <laughs> uh, great timing for that. Um, you know, when it comes to looking at, at your day and you're, you're in the workplace or just any professional lens and deciding like, how do what is the highest and best use of one's time? I used to look at that like, literally I would have two to-do lists. I think many people do this currently. They have their work, they have their life. I have now, fir I now firmly believe that to be broken. And um, each person has their own organizational approach. I don't wanna get too deep into boring people mm -hmm. when it comes to calendar blocking, um, but, but you know, one to-do list or one priority list more appropriately um, is really how I think of it now because do you spend that time with your child? You know, do you spend that hour with your work? Um, what is the coffee you're not willing to go and spend time on because you want to go invest in learning something or maybe striking a new partnership? You know, these are all decisions that are informed by trying to intersect, like intersect the personal and professional in ways that are really kind of intimidating at first. So it, it's a, it's a journey. You know, th there was many twists and turns from the point of being like a very hyper rigid organizer of my calendar for many years in the corporate environment to now everything's life integrated and like, it sounds all, you know, hunky dory, but it takes a lot of planning, a lot of hard work to do that because you have to say no a lot um, yeah. to, 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 to lower priority items. Yeah. And what I like about that, uh, Spencer, is the fact that uh, and I totally, I totally agree with you. And I think what I like about it is I think a lot of people have learned that lesson probably for the first time during the pandemic, because if there was one, if perhaps if there was a silver lining to it, uh, people who had to go home and had to suddenly work virtually had to organize their work around their family or their spouse or whatever. I think it actually exposed them to, hey, you know, there is there is a massive benefit from being able to have breakfast with my family or to be able to interact with my kids when they're doing their homework in the middle of the afternoon, even if it's only for 10 minutes or whatever, or to even have to negotiate quiet time while I can make phone calls and all of that. I think it reintegrated people into their into their families or into their personal relationships in, in, a, in a way that perhaps they wouldn't have done if I had been forced upon them. Oh, man, that is so timely. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that, John. I mean, I, I was literally recording something for uh, an investor of ours who's been with us for years in the background uh, earlier, you know, we had, our, this was early in the day. So our, our two young boys were still here. They were loud. I mean, they, they were just, you know, about banging on the door pretty much and thank God for locks. Um, but, <laughs> you know, they, they would just want to see dad. Um, but the compassion on the receiving end, I would say, is at an all time high, not, not across the board. For, I can't speak for every person mm -hmm. out there, but I would say sure. generally, it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know, and, and you think the word, the word that you use, the silver lining, that's spot on, you know, I mean, we, and we have to look for those things. I mean, at a challenging time for so many people, working from home, and it's, it's not the answer for everyone, um, but I yeah. do think that it has broken down some barriers and just stigma, you know, like, like un, yeah. unnecessary, maybe outdated uh, stigma and allows people to thrive in ways that they didn't expect before because there's compassion on all ends. And you know, we've come yeah. a long way from the, uh, I don't know how many years ago that, they, again, this was, but you may get the reference. Hopefully, it lands. Do you remember the BBC thing that happened with the the, the guy who was trying to give the, the the report out, and his wife had to call in from the background, retrieve the child back out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was probably before all COVID happened, years before, and that was the first real time where I think in, in large media, real ever, that that someone had that visibility at that level. Um, and so we've come a long way from there, where you talk to high level executives, you talk to CEOs. And they might have some kids playing in the background. And that is actually kind of kind of a beautiful thing, frankly, in terms of the intersection of the personal and professional. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. Actually, I was telling somebody the other day that uh, um, our neighborhood has kind of turned over a little bit in the last number of years where there's a, a lot of uh, the older people moved out and a lot of young families have, have moved in. And I, our, my, my son is uh, 16, so we, he's not involved in all of that. You know, these are kids who are in, in elementary school and lower... And they're running around during the pandemic, running around the neighborhood, going mental, like screaming and shouting and everything. And for me, instead of being like, oh, that's irritating for me, I was like, I am happy when I hear that because the joy of it and considering everything that's going on is hearing kids enjoying themselves is just, for me, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's a wonderful yeah. The other thing I wanted to touch on um, as well is, uh, so the, 
The other part about the separation of personal and professional is sometimes you look at, uh, okay, the job you do, the company you work with, and you go, I'm not sure I like this company. I'm not sure the people I work with are the right people for me. Maybe I don't like the culture or whatever. And, and normally when you're in a situation like that, you at least have a dialogue with yourself about, is this the right place for me, et cetera. But in our personal lives, sometimes we don't do that. We don't do the same thing. We don't say, am I surrounding myself with the right people? Am I, uh, am I coming home and the people I hang out with, am I, are they just my uh, pity party pals or uh, the people who, or are they people who even hold me back or bring me down? And if they are, why do I still, why do I still need them, need to surround myself with them? So I think sometimes, you know, we, we, we will do some analysis on our work but we don't do the same analysis on the environment that surrounds us uh, in our personal lives. What an incredible topic. I mean, the, I think this is, uh, this is so key. And, and I mean, it's, it's frankly kind of per, you know, personal and I'm just trying to play to the theme we're going for here, but I would just say that it is very personal for me, given that I went through the journey over the past five years of you know, being a very kind of hardcore tech sales and operations professional leader for years and then becoming a full-time entrepreneur and a CEO of a company. It's like that journey required massive changes on the personal and professional fronts. And that means you don't go out of your way necessarily to, to craft this, uh, you know, social network on a personal level. That means like you call up your old friends and say, Hey man, I can't, I'm not going to see you again. You know, yeah. and, and, and that's not the message. However, I, I have come to really believe and subscribe to the, to, to the notion of you are the sum, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself by the most. Uh, you know, that, I know that's probably butchering that platitude, but it is absolutely true in my experience. Um, you're also looking for, you know, are people that you're surrounding yourself with, do, are they invested in your success so much that they will call you on your, on, on your crap? You know, mm -hmm. like, like if you're unwilling to follow through, if you are slipping on your commitments, um, if, if you feel like you are not showing up well or, or maybe not being compassionate enough, it doesn't mean everyone has to show up at a certain financial level. Um, it, 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 you know, it doesn't mean they have to be a certain style. I mean, I think having a diverse set of, of personalities, of backgrounds, of, of, you know, all these things is so key. And that's been very much my experience. You know, I have, you know, mm -hmm. one one particular mentor who is so different from me personally, but I, I consider him a great friend and we will talk regularly and he calls me out on my stuff all the time. And um, it's really become a beautiful relationship where I will never appreciate his taste in movies. Um, mm -hmm. But, but uh, you know, but I very much respect everything he has to say on the topic of leadership, sales management, sales and, and operations in general. But mm -hmm. I, I love the comments so much, John. It, it's uh, played out in my life personally. And I would say that if folks are struggling with that, um, one of the books I found most helpful has been uh, Essentialism, um, I, I think by Greg McEwen. Um, mm -hmm. It really talks about prioritization, uh, but I think just to, I'm not, and I just, I'm a fan of the book, but I would say it gives you ways to say no. Yeah. And that's where the wheels fall off the bus for so many of us. It, it yeah. is being able to sit there when you're a friend that you care about, you've known them for decades, but they may not necessarily be on the same page with you in terms of focus, drive, hustle, caliber of life you're trying to build actively um and you have to say man i'm really excited to hang out with you but it just can't be right now you know like ha the phrasing of that some people get deeply uncomfortable with that and it's not easy so you know i just I'd recommend that book uh it's just it was helpful for me at least i read it three times and i still am a fan of it now yeah no it is it is one of the toughest things uh and especially i think uh nowadays especially for a lot of younger people growing up now because uh they're growing up in this you know crazy world of social media and likes and followers and everything is measured in quantity as opposed to to quality um unfortunately a lot of the time i know i'm generalizing but uh i think there's a lot of truth in that and and the opposite, as you go through your journey, you, you discover that actually reducing, uh, reducing your universe to quality people who fit that part of your life. And the other part is we transition. My goodness, we have different mm -hmm. lives during this life and we transition and, and the people who were the right people or even the wrong people at one time, you know, are, may no longer be, be the people that you should surround yourself with. But I think the, the idea of reduction for quality, it's a really, really tough thing because we, 
in this culture, we celebrate having tons of friends, having a big network, you know, and, and as I said, especially the younger people with followers and likes and all that stuff. Very much so. Yeah. And uh, it resonates deeply as a guy who, frankly, I don't spend much time on, for example, I'm not anti uh, social media, but like, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook these days, but I'd rather do is just connect more meaningfully with people. And that's not just because maybe I'm an older millennial or somewhere around the cusp, or I'm not sure, but um, it, it is truly just a matter of trying to fig figure out what is the highest and best uh, use of my time, which also includes meaningful, just valuable relationships personally. Like it doesn't just mean, am I going to maximize my ROI or am I going to add zeros to my annual income and revenue streams? You know, it, it, it's, it, is it filling my cup personally? Because this is very much a long game. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, the topic that you, or the theme that you hit on John, which is so, it, it's so interesting as it plays out over time for all of us, it's like, life is like lived life, life is lived in chapters right and, yeah. and at the same time it's a continuity so the chapters may change people may come and go actively but you are on that same continuum and so figuring out how you adapt and you change and, and we all change when with that is, is just really um it's a dynamic process and it's never yeah. done you know yeah yeah and and i think the, the tough part about that a lot of times for all of us is sometimes if something if something keeps repeating itself in your life, you're the only common denominator, unfortunately, that's there. So somehow you've eventually you've got to own it and say, OK, what am I doing to contribute to this? Why am I attracting this? Why is this? This is happening for a reason. And as I said, as you go through your life, you are the only common denominator in your life. Oh, truly. Yeah, really well said. I mean, I think I look at. Um... Here's a theme, as corny as this sounds, John, that's like, it's a little laughable. Um, the, the theme for this year, if I had to pick one for us on a both personal and professional front is health and wealth. You know, it's not, not just wealth mm -hmm. building, it's, it's the health. And that means, you know, mental, physical, not just getting more, more exercise, but just like taking care of oneself, um, particularly important during the pandemic. I know that's been a common topic you know, for, for so many folks out there, but now more than ever, uh, it really is worth investing in. And so like we've doubled down on that in a big way, even if it eats into my, you know, we talk about personal development, professional development. I believe in the magic hour. We all have, you know, critical times of day. We are our most productive in all facets. And uh, for me, that's the morning. It's a tough trade-off for me to say, I'm going to go see a personal trainer in the morning, or I'm going to go for a right. run in the morning during my magic hour. That was a really hard thing for me to wrestle with. And I was like, still worth it. You know, absolutely yeah. still worth it. I'm going to lose productivity in the work sense. I will gain significant productivity in the overall, overall life sense. Yeah. And, and that's why I think uh, as, we, as we round off here, I think uh, the, the topic is so important because I do think the if you had to make you don't have to make a choice, but if you had to make a choice between where should you start and prefer invest time in personal development as opposed to professional development, I would always advocate for personal development because I think that if if you don't have a good foundation in your in your personal life, in yourself, uh, and if there's chaos and whatever that around you, there is no way that you can be as effective as you could be in a professional sense. And then once you at least lay a some foundation of stability or groundedness in your personal life, then you work on the professional development. It'll actually it'll actually take hold much faster than it would if you just decided to go on the professional development path and not do any of the personal development. Completely agree. I mean, sustainable success in all facets, right? It, it, it all comes back to that first. It's not, it, it is not a confusing chicken and the egg. It is truly like personal comes first and you will find out. And I have personally found out the hard way when you prioritize professional over personal burnout is inevitable. Yeah. Um, and it so is. it will come for you. <laughs> if, you yeah. think you're, if you think you're impervious, then you just mm -hmm. haven't gotten there yet. Um, yeah. But yeah. Really great comment, John. Yeah. And it's funny, I just one last thing that you mentioned at the beginning around people's fixation around titles, I have to say, I mean, it's probably much the same back home in Ireland these days. But when I first came here, like 25 years ago, it was the first thing that I really noticed in, in corporate America, I, I came to Silicon Valley during the dot com. But I never realized how important the title was to people and 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 there used to be times when you could almost say to somebody you know you were managing yeah i'll give you a different title but i'm not giving you a pay rise they'd be like oh no if you give me this title i'll be happy and i'm like okay personally i would take right. the pay rise over the title but that's just me and and i do think that that i do think that that's an interesting comment 
uh, just to just just to put a pin in because I think that is something that people ought to look at. Like, why is that so overarchingly important? Maybe to some people who are listening, you've got to really look at that and say, and say, what does that mean? That that is so in, important to me. You couple your self worth from your job title and do it as mm -hmm. fast as you possibly can. I completely agree. Yeah, it, it, I was that guy. I was very much that guy and the, it took years to get away from being that guy. Um, yeah. and it's, it's hard fought, but it's well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, Spencer, this has been a fantastic conversation, a fantastic topic. I thank you for that topic. Uh, it's, it's really great. Uh, all of Spencer's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Yeah, happy to. And thanks again for having me, John. This has been a lot of fun. Um, one of my favorite topics. So uh, Madison Investing is the name of my company. Uh, it's madisoninvesting.com. That's our website. What we help people do is just invest in uh, large real estate deals, you know, private funds, syndications. And we work with a wide array of folks, but a significant population of people from tech as well as the sales, uh, the sales industries. So yeah, come check us out. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, as I said, all the information will be below this video. So I encourage you to go check it out. All right. Well, thanks again, Spencer. Thank you all for watching and listening, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you.